let's take a look at an extremely important process in chemistry, ethanol production. There are two ways to produce ethanol. We can use a hydration of ethene or fermentation. Firstly, the hydration of ethene. Hydration means to add a molecule of water. So if we take ethene, which is an alkene with a double bond, and add a molecule of water to it, we get an equilibrium reaction that produces ethanol. Now the conditions for this equilibrium reaction are 60 atmospheres pressure, which drives the equilibrium to the right because there's less moles of gas on the right hand side. We use 600 Kelvin temperature and a phosphoric acid catalyst that has a formula H3PO4. To understand the role of the catalyst, we have to look at the mechanism. So the reaction mechanism shows the curly arrows, which represent movement of electron pairs. If we start with a molecule of ethene, the catalyst is an acid, so it releases protons or H plus ions. And the electrons in that double bond can attack the H plus ion, adding it to one of the carbon atoms. So on the first carbon atom, we've now got three hydrogens, but on the second, we've only got two. So we put a positive charge there. And then a water molecule can attack that carbocation with its electron pairs joining to it. Remember, charge is conserved through the mechanism. So we've got a plus one charge in each step here. So when we draw that water molecule, it's still got its two hydrogens, and it's also got that positive charge. If one of those hydrogens from the water molecule breaks off so that the electrons go onto the oxygen, getting rid of that charge on the oxygen, an H plus ion is going to be kicked back out again. And that's going to form our final product, ethanol, and also releasing an H plus ion. So in the first step, the phosphoric acid catalyst donated that proton, the H plus. So that comes from the H3PO4. And that was added to the alkene. But in the second, for the final step, it's released, it's spat back out. So it acts as a catalyst. There's no net change in H plus concentration. Let's have a look at this second process then, fermentation. Fermentation is a chemical reaction, but the start of the story is growing plants. So let's imagine a plant growing, and it's got these beautiful green leaves. And the green leaves contain a pigment called chlorophyll. And this is a site of photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is a chemical reaction that requires sunlight. And that provides the energy source for photosynthesis. And carbon dioxide is absorbed from the air. Water is taken up through the plant roots. And in photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water are combined together to make a compound called glucose. The equation is 6 CO2, 6 carbon dioxide, plus 6 H2O, 6 waters, combined to give C6H12O6, which is a formula for glucose, and 6 oxygen molecules. And it's that C6H12O6, glucose, that's important for us in the next step. So the carbon to make that glucose has all come from the atmosphere. And when we take that glucose and carry out the reaction called fermentation, we mix it with yeast, and about 35 degrees Celsius, over time, ethanol begins to form. The equation is C6H12O6. It goes to form two molecules of ethanol, CH3CH2OH. That's a condensed formula for ethanol. But we also form two molecules of carbon dioxide in this process, which bubble off. Now, we can use the ethanol to make alcoholic drinks. If you want to make stronger drinks, you're going to need to distill it. Or we can use it to make fuels. We can burn the ethanol. Let's have a look at using ethanol in fuels. So if we burn the ethanol, what we're doing is we're reacting it with oxygen. And we call this biofuels. For example, the ethanol could be mixed with something like diesel, which would be biodiesel. And the energy that's released in that burning reaction originally came from the sun. Now, to understand what's going on fully, we need to look at the chemical equation. So when we burn ethanol, let's burn both molecules of ethanol that we formed in fermentation. It reacts with oxygen, and the balance equation is 2 ethanol plus 6 oxygen gives us 4 carbon dioxide plus 6 water molecules. Let's pop those down there, a bit more space. Now... Both in fermentation and burning ethanol, carbon dioxide is released, and this is a problem because carbon dioxide contributes to global warming. It's a greenhouse gas. So we've got two molecules of ethanol in fermentation plus four in burning gives us six molecules of carbon dioxide being emitted into the atmosphere. 
But go back to the beginning of the process. To make the glucose in the first place, six molecules of carbon dioxide were absorbed by the plant. So we've got six molecules of carbon dioxide being absorbed at the beginning, and then those six molecules of carbon dioxide are released both in fermentation and burning combined. So in theory, biofuels are carbon neutral. There's no net change in carbon dioxide. But in reality, we have to use fertilizers to grow our crops, and that requires energy. We have to transport materials around, which usually requires burning of fossil fuels. Um, heat energy is needed for fermentation. And also to grow the sugarcane for the um, fermentation, we have to deforest areas of land. So although theoretically biofuels are carbon neutral, in practice they may not be.